Stephanie Dobson is back with us this week. Stephanie is a lawyer and mediator here in Lloydminster at Hank and Divorce Law and Mediation. It's for another episode of Healthy Thriving Families in Two Homes. So Stephanie, today we're going to be talking about traveling, uh, specifically when you're going through separation and divorce and traveling with kids. So what should parents be thinking about when they're going to travel with their kids if they're going through a separation and divorce process? Well, this topic, of course, it, it we're talking specifically about separation and divorce, but really, really what we're talking is about is when children are traveling, when they're either accompanied only by one parent or guardian or when they're unaccompanied. So what we want to talk about here is we're going to focus on two things. Number one is what kind of travel is allowed. And the second thing is what kind of documentation should parents be thinking about when they're looking to travel. So first of all, what kind of travel is allowed? So first, what we want to do is look into your parenting plan. So that parenting plan may be a separation agreement that's been agreed between the parents, or it may be a court order. But oftentimes when I'm building separation agreements, I'll specify exactly what travel is allowed and what's not. So are you free to travel when you have the children? Do you need to give some kind of notice to the other parent? Are there, is there restrictions on geography? Can you travel outside of the city, outside of the province? Do you have to give notice or ask permission? So those kind of things. So every family has a different comfort level with parents individually traveling with the children. So it's really best to prepare ahead of time and to be specific in your parenting plan. So then second, we'll talk about the documentation that's needed. So there's no legal requirement for any specific type of documentation to carry when you're traveling with your children. But the more documentation that you have to prove that this particular travel is permitted is better. So if you're traveling domestically, there's not going to be a border patrol at the province, you know, with at the provincial border to say, you know, are you allowed to travel? But it's still a good idea if you're flying to provide those kind of travel consents. But when you're traveling internationally, definitely you're going to want something that proves to a customs or immigration officer that this travel is allowed. And now further to that, Stephanie, let's get into that a little bit more. If you are traveling outside of Canada with your children and it is just the one spouse, what type of documentation should you be looking at having with you, even if it's just as a backup? So I always recommend have a consent to travel form. Now there's no, that form, there's no, there's nothing specific. Um, there's all sorts of different forms out there. Sometimes travel agents have forms. Um, Tra uh, Transport Canada has a form. Yeah, lawyers offices will have specific forms um, that can be notarized to help people as they're looking to travel. And so the more in the, the point of the form is the more information that you have on the form to prove to whoever you need to, the airlines, the customs, whomever, uh, the police if necessary, that you have um, the you're that you're this particular travel is allowed the better. So names of the children, names of the parent who's providing the consent, so the non-traveling parent, name of the parent who's traveling, you know, birth certificate numbers if you have them and well uh, uh, handy and uh, passport uh, numbers if you have them handy um, is is really good. Now on that particular form, there's also no requirement, um, no particular witnessing requirements. Anyone who is of the age of majority can witness these travel forms. I highly recommend though that the travel form be notarized by a notary public. Now, if you go into any law office, we're all as lawyers, we're all notary publics automatically. And so it's the, the more degree of formality that you give, the less likely that you're going to have a hassle uh, at the border. Uh, when should parents look into getting these forms signed? How far ahead of in advance of, of the trip? Or is this something you should just kind of always have with you? Well, uh, it's it's best if you can have a specific travel form for that specific uh, vacation or the, the travel. Um, there are opportunities to provide a general consent to travel as in, you know, you can this parent can travel anytime to any place but uh, and and signed by the non-traveling parent but it is best to have something specific for that travel um you know just for the travel dates um itself now what i always recommend is the earlier that you can get that form signed even before you finalize the booking of that travel the better worst case scenario you're in the airport trying to tell a customs officer that you're taking your children to disneyland and the customs officer says sorry ma'am the form is not 
is not um, complete or it's not valid uh, or authentic enough. And then they just put you through a bit more of the ringer to try to make sure that there's no cross-border travel that's been prohibited or that's um, not been, um, the consent hasn't been given by the non-traveling parent. So I always say it's really simple to get these forms done. I, I'll break it down into three really simple steps. Provide the information on the form, um, get the non-traveling parent to attend at a lawyer's office to get that form notarized, and then the form gets delivered to the traveling parent. So really simple, and there's it's really easy to uh, make sure that uh, you don't end up with travel that ends up having no consent, you know, a week or two before the travel. All right, Stephanie. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us today. That's a lot of yeah. good information for those who might be traveling here coming up anytime soon. So thanks for joining us yeah. again, and we'll speak with you again next week. Thanks. Talk to you soon.